Today, witnesses shared horrific details about the murders of 16-year-old Tylee Ryan and her little brother, 7-year-old J.J. Vallow. Their mom, Lori Vallow, is charged with murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and grand theft in their deaths. She's also charged with conspiracy and theft in the death of her now husband, Chad Daybell's late wife, Tammy Daybell. We want to warn you, this story shares some graphic details and may be hard for some of you to watch. But Abby Davis joins us now with a breakdown of what happened in court. And Abby, the question is... This was really hard for a lot of jurors mm -hmm. to hear, right? This was a tough day. It really was, and some people were crying. Others were actually throwing up. For the first time, experts revealed J.J. and Tylee's autopsy reports, and they spared no details. On Wednesday, the court heard graphic new details about how J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan died. Two kids, just 7 and 16 years old. Dr. Garth Warren with the Ada County Coroner's Office spent most of the day reviewing J.J. and Tylee's autopsy reports. Dr. Warren, what is your occupation or profession? I am a forensic pathologist. Warren conducted the autopsies on June 11, 2020, just two days after investigators found the kids' remains on their mother's fifth and current husband, Chad Daybell's property. Was this the first time you had ever seen J.J. Vallow? Yes. And approximately how long did that autopsy last? It took approximately four hours. Warren revealed J.J. suffocated to death. During cross-examination, defense attorney John Thomas asked Warren how he came to that conclusion. J.J. was found with a plastic bag over his head that was duct taped tightly. He was bound. There was evidence of a struggle, and there was no other explanation of why he was dead. Thomas continued asking Warren how he knew this without swabbing inside J.J.'s nose. I've never heard anybody doing that in this type of situation. Okay, what type of situation are you talking about? Bag over the head. Okay, so when someone has a bag over their head, and I'm just going off of things I've seen in movies and whatnot. That's like, scary. That's scary to you? Yeah, but you're going off movies. Well, you're going off of... Uh, My knowledge. Knowledge, okay. When Warren described how Ty Lee died, he said it was homicide by, quote, unspecified means. So the examiner knows Ty Lee was murdered, but cannot pinpoint exactly where or how it happened because of what her remains looked like. The vast majority of the times when I perform an autopsy, uh, I get an entire body. There's a process that we went through. Tylee's case was different. Tylee's remains were received in three separate sealed bags. FBI Special Agent Steve Daniels also took the stand, finishing his testimony from Tuesday. Daniels talked about law enforcement's search of Chad Daybell's property. When we left off yesterday, I believe we had spoken about in this exhibit the house, the fire pit, uh, Tylee's burial site, and the garage and shed. Is that correct? That is correct. Daniels described the area around JJ's grave. What's interesting now is just the precise way that these rocks are, are laid out. You can start to see the cut roots around this grave, especially the bigger roots. So somebody's taken time and effort to cut through these roots. Daniel said after they found JJ, they knew Tylee's remains were somewhere on the property too. Throughout the day, witnesses referred to different photos. Some of those photos were so graphic that only jurors looked at them. Of course, we have a more detailed recap of the day on our website, ktvb.com. But Brian and Morgan, again, these testimonies were just so graphic. It was a really tough day for some people in court. But, you know, prosecutors saying yesterday, at least when I was in court, that they have to show some of these things because yes. it's evidence and they need jurors to be able to take it all into account. And going back to a story we did last week, yeah. we asked Ada County if they were going to be offering counseling services for jurors. They said that they were looking into that and it would be a possibility and they have done that in cases in the Definitely past. Definitely a, re a needed resource yeah. for these jurors. All right, Abby, thank you. For more in-depth coverage from court today, you can scan that QR code right there on your screen or head over to our website, ktvb.com. You can also watch our streaming show, Inside the Courtroom, with more discussion about testimony in Vallow's trial on Roku or Fire Stick. Just search KTVB+. We also have that on our YouTube page.